bout, working in this, his 137th world title bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and white striped trunks, and joining us from Nashville, Tennessee. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds even. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 27 wins, no losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBA number 10 ranked middleweight contender introducing the undefeated Jonathan Reed Dog Reed. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing black trunks with gray trim, fighting out of Seabrook by way of Silver Spring, Maryland. He weighed in at a ready 159 and one half pounds with a record of 31 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time WBA middleweight champion of the world, introducing William Jumpy. Once again, Joe Cortez, our referee in charge. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. I want good sportsmanlike conduct. Understood? Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. All right. I like the guy in the black and silver trunks. Well, you're hedging your bet. <laughs> Both of them I hope you'll be a little bit more unequivocal when we get to the main event, Larry. Out, We're being generous in our graphics and calling Reed's trunks zebra striped. And I think that's fair enough. Incidentally, not many times in your boxing spectator life will you see a middleweight championship contested between two fighters, neither of whom took up the sport until after the age of 20. But that's what's happening here. Joppy is already starting to jab to the body. That's what you want to do with him. Uh, the lesser experienced fighter, go to the body, make certain you take away all of his win in case this fight goes on, you can use your experience. Reed has better try to get in there and knock this guy out. His chances are great if he get him while he's, the experienced fighters are always cold. Reed is a former kung Reed. fu artist, a former kickboxer, and as such, his hardest problem in becoming a boxer was to master footwork. He had a habit of setting up in too wide a stance, and even here, his stance looks a little unnaturally wide as Joppy comes in and goes to the body again. Oh, he has a good stand. There's nothing wrong with that. But he's got to get on the, the experienced fighter, try to take him out early. Don't wait to warm up with him. I like his balance even better than anything. Joppy has already found something with that straight right hand over the... Even though Reed is holding his left high, he's getting over it. Joppy looks very calm as he examines Reed and tries to find the holes in the less experienced fighter's game. Reed seems to want to feel his way into the bout a little bit. George Foreman recommending more aggression. Yeah, you need to get out there. The experienced fighters, they want to get warm and let you get warm. Don't do it. Jump on him, go to the body, go to the head. Your chances are greater to get a second, third round knockdown and change okay, everything. What's coming in with the head? They stand and face each other in the center of the ring. Joppy's had the best of it so far, landing several right hands over or through the guard of Reed. Reed trying to get his jab going. Joppy blocks it, comes back again, jabbing to the body, as George pointed out at the beginning. Jop is doing good. Keep him, keep jabbing, keep jabbing. Don't let him breathe for one moment. Oh yeah, watch the head, watch the head. Here's a guy that stands flex as he's in motion. You know he has some power somewhere though. Don't allow him to get set. You know, I doubt that Reed has ever been in with anybody who has hit him a half a dozen jabs to the body in the first round or even in a whole fight. And Joppy drives Reed back into the ropes with another chopping overhand right. You get the feeling Joppy's holding a little bit in reserve here. He has occasionally just tried to land without a lot of force as he 
continues to seemingly set Reed up for something down the road. The jab has got Reed backing up, blinking, and all off balance. Joppy feints with the right hand, comes with the left of the body. Reed tries to leap forward into an offensive stance, but it was an excellent round for the champion, William Joppy. Bit, haven't you? See what he's got? Hit you with a good right hand. It came over. You lean back a little bit. Instead of blocking it, I want you to keep it up there and block it, okay? Sir. All right, let them hands go. Let them hands go. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Let them hands go. Keep it, keep his calm down. Just keep with hands busy. Keep his hands busy. Just crush it right over. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I don't know if you caught the uh, CompuBox graphic. William Joppy by CompuBox numbers threw 59 jabs in the first round. Landed 20 of them. Looks like he's picking up right where he left off. That is called jabbing your opponent to distraction. Oh, heck, guys? And there he goes again. Double up on the jab, jab to the body. Back upstairs with the jab. Jab, jab again. The jab, the left jab is the best punch in boxing. If you know how to use it, you can win a fight easily. My favorite George Foreman quote, boxing is easy if you have a jab. Now Reed is trying to power up with his left hook. You gotta be careful. Well, I think what Reed has to do is, is be able to counter the jab somehow and so, so that he can stop it coming as often. He has enough experience to try to counter the jab. He better not get into that match. Just stay close. Right hand lead lands for Joppy, and another right hand straight over the top of Reed's left. And now Reed getting a little gun shy about the right. Reed is trying to play the counterpunch, as Larry mentioned earlier. You don't want to be in there with an experienced fighter trying to be a counterpuncher. You want to be the first to do everything. A couple of times in this round, Joppy has looked toward his corner and made a motion toward it. I'm not quite sure if somebody is yelling instructions and he's responding to it or if he's uh, trying to convey some information to them. Joppy has Reed on the run midway through the second round, and you can see that Reed's instinct is to box. He's been schooled that way. Puts him in a tough spot because he seems to be in against a guy who's technically superior, and this is one of these situations that calls for him to be less structured and to try to brawl and make some action, right? Yeah, Reed has better get a little aggressive. If he can just turn on the aggression, he can change things real quick. Reed would not like to be backing up in this fight. Well, but he is backing up now. I mean, uh, Joppy would not like to be backing no, no, up. No, Joppy doesn't want to back up. No. That's right. If Reed would just go forward, but then a left jab can leave you mystified like that. Reed continually in trouble here in the second round as Joppy increasingly dispenses with the jab now and goes with body shots and other power punches. The referee is really looking good at uh, Reed now. You can see the referee watching his eyes. Trying to make sure he keeps Reed safe. Yeah, safe. In an experience where he is clearly outclassed in terms of skill. Reed sneaks in the right hand, but he never tries to finish with a left hook. Another right cross flush on the chin. Reed totally on the defensive. Seemingly befuddled as Joppy lands his jab at will and follows frequently with the right. Reed is the bowler. Joppy is the one throwing the strikes. Nice. Listen, you're not swelling. This is just to keep your face cool. Look, John. Look. You're not punching, son. You're not punching. What happened to the jail? Huh? What happened? Fake that jab in the body, right hand. Two, three. What did you do, baby? Take a deep breath. 
the body, the body is the punch. Yeah. Right. The body is the punch. Bring that three behind it. Yeah. Two, three. Bang. Get a bucket there. Reed is finding out that this isn't a gym in Tennessee. It's not in the right, Midwest Circus. Go, go. This is the big time. And he's in there with a, somebody who is showing him what the big time feels like and looks like. And Jaffe starts round three with a lead right hand. And Reed comes back with his best punch of the fight. And which was the best punch of the fight? Yeah, because Jaffe at that point didn't expect it at all. I mean, Reed landed four punches in the preceding round to Jaffe's 54. That's what you, you got to be careful of as an experienced fighter. You get out there and you hit the guy with your best stuff. And he goes back to the corner and his corner tells him he hasn't hurt you. Now, what are you going to do? Now, all of a sudden, Jaffe is going to be careful. That's what you want him to be. Be careful and lay off you a little bit. Amazing how one punch can change the psychology of the fight. Yeah. Be careful. Nice uppercut by Joppy. Nice little right hand inside there. If Reed could just manage to throw that right hand and come back with a left hook, he can really do something. Get on, get on, get on. I'll tell you, Joppy Bernard Hopkins would be a fascinating fight. They both have old school skills. Tough guys, too. Yep. And Joppy, for his part, has said that he's very eager to get hold of a unification bout with Hopkins, despite the fact that his ties to promoter Don King and Hopkins' past animosity for King might make it difficult. Whoa! Quick right hand. See that? When an experienced fighter gets you with a good right hand like that and you don't hit the floor, you're standing on your feet, you don't give him any more respect. Keep going far what Reed should do. Maybe it's well, but now it gets blocked by a right hand and goes down rather than to take further punishment. Four. A clear five, case of six, a badly hurt Reed seven, electing to take a knee. Eight. How you feel? We got to continue? Step forward. Step forward. We got caught just going back with nothing else. Caught the greatest shot earlier. <laughs> Reed trying to grab Joppy and hold him. Can't get a grip. Jackie comes back with another right hand. Reed better do something or the referee is going to come in and stop this fight. Yeah, because Cortez is concerned about Reed. Well, he, concerned about what he's taking. He told us he was a 406 miler as a schoolboy. He better start showing us some of that if footwork. He, if he just holds on right now to his head, get clear. Hold on. That's what he should do. Hold on. Twenty seconds left in the round. And there you go. He lands about two more right hands. Hold on until you get to the corner. Reed may not make it out of here. Hold on. Cortez watching and watching. Well, he's in the corner, but not the way he wants to be. And Reed manages to finish the round, but considerably the worse for wear. How you doing? Give me a bucket! Pull the pants out. There's a Nevada State Athletic Commission doctor okay, well, in Reed's water. corner taking a close look. And the best, hey, best referee in the world is in the ring. Okay, guys, I'm here. Make sure you don't take unnecessary punishment. How you feeling, my man? Okay. Huh? You want me to stop this? No. no. Okay. I don't want to take any unnecessary punishment. All right? I'm going to back, man. Jonathan, you got a popcorn. You got to suck it up, man. Your hands are darkened down. Reed is a tough kid, trying to do his best, but has been thrown in over his head, obviously a little too quickly. As an old track coach used to say at Oklahoma when I was a student there, this ain't a county meet, son. <laughs> Well, gee, I wonder how Harold has it scored 2 3. Be quick, Harold. <laughs> I'll get you. 30 to 26, three rounds to nothing. William Joppy, you got to give the champion an extra point for that knockdown in round three. So, pretty easy fight to score so far, Jim. I would think so, given that in CompuBox numbers, Joppy so far has landed 142 punches to 18 for Reed, and I don't know when I've seen hey! quite a margin. He got caught with a right hand. Reed hits Joppy with a good right hand. Yep. And he's still shocked. 
Second round in a row that Reed has managed the clock jockey early with the right hand. Reed has got power. He said this would be a win situation for him. He showed good. May come back. Win, lose, or draw. He can only win here tonight. There's that right hand again. Whoa. He's got power and he's got guts, too. Maybe more than he needs at this moment. As he's hanging in. There you go. And a right uppercut snaps Joppy's head back. And he has power. He's been taking a licking all throughout this fight, and he still seems to have power. Yeah, Joppy just getting too many free shots, though, with the right hand. Yeah, you're right about that. The experienced fighter is just pot shotting him. You got to fight back. Just get aggressive. There's the right hand again. right hand again, yep. And the left. Now Reed's starting to flex up a little bit. It's almost as if Reed has said to himself, well, I'm getting embarrassed here. I may as well go for broke. Well, his dad said he was combat ready. Uh, and that's what you do. You get in the ring and you get into a fight and you fight. That's what you want to see. If he doesn't get damaged, it could be a tremendous learning experience for Jonathan Reed. This can only be a win situation for Reed. Well, there's a hard right hand and Reed grabs and holds. The referee saw it also. Rather than to go down. Now Cortez is watching Reed and watching him exclusively as he takes another right hand. Reed dropping his hands, giving Joppy free shots with the right. You can watch the ref. This is the referee's fight at this point. A oh, good body shot by Joppy, trying to set up the finish. Now, if I'm a good referee or a corner man, I'll say, let's save this guy for later on. Let him get his experience. Don't let him get killed. Not literally, but keep him alive so he can come back. There was a right to the ribs that I think was the beginning of the end. That there it is. is. Joe Cortez has seen quite enough. That right to the read, I mean right to the ribs, was a well-chosen offensive tactic by Joppy. That's what you do. You got a fighter like that with some potential. He would have gotten up because he's brave. You, you come to his rescue. That's what the referee did. Well, you said it. The best referee in the world doing a very professional very job of saving job. Jonathan Reed for more. That's great. Yes, Joppy closed the show, landing 48 of 71 in that round to Reed's 3 of 19. But the three that Reed landed, he'll remember. <laughs> His dad said that he was come back ready, and he didn't lie. The guy was ready. His dad is an ex-Marine. It was a great privilege to have the meeting with him yesterday because everything was yes, sir, no, sir. I'm thrilled to be here, sir. Thank you, sir. Very much. Tell them you meet the nice ones. This is one of the nice guys. And so's Joppy, incidentally, yeah. who uh, was as gracious as he could be in the meeting yesterday and said very nice things about Hopkins, and, and he doesn't need to. He showed us he has probably one of the better, better left jabs in his, in his class, weight class. And some real professionalism, putting body combinations puncher. together, choosing that body punch at just the right moment to finish it off in the fourth. And he was wise to finish it off. You let this guy hang around, he was getting more confident. Confidence was coming. I'm sure William Joppy would say exactly the same thing. <laughs> Well, and let's take a look back at replays, and uh, George, uh, you and I agreed uh, early in the, the fourth round, just too many free shots with the right hand throughout the fight for William Joppy. One after another, and then he ends, comes right back with his left jab, the champ does, moves him back, keeps his balance real good, Reed does, but hey, that's just too much firepower. And the referee, like I said, it's his fight. He's going to have to call this one, and he did. He came to the rescue of a brave and courageous fighter. You know what you saw over and over here, which you see from really professional fighters like Hopkins and Roy Jones, Choppy looks down, punches up, looks up, punches down. Yeah, he's got an arsenal, no doubt about it. He jabs, always finishes with a good in position to do something else. And that's the moment at which Joe Cortez said, enough right hands, I'm going to prevent you from taking any further punishment, Jonathan Reed. And look at that right to the body. Yep. Right that that short right, hard right hand to the, the body. that take you and kind of paralyze you. Paralyzed is a good word because you can see that Reed yeah. had no legs after It'll he took that shot to the body. It'll make you sit until the pain goes away. <laughs> Joppy landed 91 more punches than Reed was able to throw in the fight. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official particulars on the knockout.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 43 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout yes. and still the WBA middleweight yes. champion of the world, yes. William yes. Jumpy. Good fighter. Final punch that number is a CompuBox wipeout for Joppy. Jonathan Reed gets a useful learning experience, goes back to Tennessee with a better sense of what big time boxing is all about. He can all tell his family and be proud, hey, I was in with a good one. And I hit him one good one too. <laughs> He's maybe too many behaved like a man. Let's go up to Larry Merchant in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, William. Was this anything more than batting practice against an inexperienced opponent? Well, you know, he got in there with me, so he felt that he was experienced enough to deal with me. So I had to take care of business like I did. He hit you a couple of sneaky right hands. Did yeah. it bother you at all? No, nah, not at all, right? He uh, caught me because he not really a, he don't throw the right hand too much. So he caught me off guard. He just was working his left hand. And then when he did throw the right hand, he caught me off guard a few times. But it didn't stun me at all. Uh, let's take a quick look at the future. You have a stake in the main event tonight. Who are you rooting for? Uh, <laughs> I think Trinidad going to get the unanimous decision. <laughs> it's going to go the distance. Um, so we're talking about that maybe next. Or Bernard Hopkins, one of the two. So that if Trinidad wins, you think you may defend your title against your middleweight title against him as he moves up in weight. But if he doesn't win, then you think you might want to unify the title against Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, I think that's the, the next possibility is Bernard Hopkins. Because like I said, I'm not going to count my eggs before they hatch. I'm going to see what uh, Trinidad is going to do tonight. Uh, Bernard Hopkins won last night on a 10th round knockout. So we'll just see. And, if, and I want to say hi to my daughter Tamika, little William, Quindon, and Jazzy and Shay. Thank you very much, William. Just spit it right in there. Don't worry about it. Pop your hands. Be sharp. Change your angle. Give him that, hey, hey, come on. And snap your punch. So you saw the copy.